Good morning and welcome to Unity Fort Worth special live stream service. We're so thrilled you could join us this morning. Let's start off with a fabulous song by Our Love. We are one in the spirit. We are one. This is the time in our service when we say hello to each other. We can't gather together physically, but we are all gathered together in spirit and love. So we can say, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Check on your neighbor, check on your friends. You can make a comment on our Facebook live stream, or you can say hello in our special Zoom room. It's always fun to see our friends that we miss and love. So let's do that now. And then we'll sing our next song together. We come together.
Good morning and happy Sunday to everyone. What an energy we already are building up. So let us take this energy into our prayer today. Let's open up in high spirits, moving with our breath deeply into the heart space and bring our heart and mind into perfect harmony so that we can find and expand into that divinity, that divine expression that we are. Today, we have come together to celebrate. We are celebrating with high energy, with laughter and with joy, who we truly are behind the many masks we are wearing. We tap into that greatness that we see in those great teachers that have come before us. Regardless of what religion and what spiritual path we are talking about, the expression of the infinite potential of what God is, is ours to accomplish, ours to take action in, in ours to do right now. So we are uplifting ourselves right now without begging or asking for anything, but claiming the very nature of who we are. We set aside all limitations, all judgments. We are willing to let go of any regrets and any worries we have right now and perfectly come together as a community in this moment. This moment is all there is, and we know that the power lies within. We express this power right now as we envision each other, as we will be in the sanctuary together. We simply use the power of our mind to see all of us together, all of us in community. We reach out, we touch, we hug, we smile, and we see the Christ within. And with that power, we use all that there is, every fiber of our being, everything that is existent in the universe, everything is powered through only one source and one power. And we are part of that. We use our prayer requests right now and we can express it out loud, silently in our hearts, put it in the comment section, whatever works for us because our requests or claims. We are claiming the fulfillment of what is already in our hearts to do. We wouldn't be able to request it if we already didn't know that we deserve for it to be fulfilled. So in gratitude, we look at each other in our mind's eye. We smile once more as we say thank you. And so it is. Amen. Let's affirm our first two principles. Together, there is only one presence and one power in our lives and in the universe. God, goodness, omnipotence. We are God expressing such inherent goodness. And our mission statement, we teach and live universal truth, unconditional love, and abundant life. The affirmation is I share God's love, peace, and joy. Let's say this together. I share God's love, peace, and joy. While I treasure my times of quiet and solitude, I also look forward to enjoying the company of family, friends, and members of my faith community. Whether we're working, volunteering, praying, or simply enjoying one another's company, our shared experiences allow me to support people I care about and feel supported in return. I enjoy and value togetherness throughout every season of my human journey. During times of trial, hardship, or grief, being in the company of friends and family helps comfort me and keep me strong. Likewise, during times of celebration, being in the company of others multiplies my joy. 
in times of togetherness, may the love, peace, comfort, and joy of God bless us all. Today's scripture verse is from Acts 2, 44. All who believed were together and had all things in common. The affirmation again, I share God's love, peace, and joy. Together, I share God's love, peace, and joy. Thank you, Queen. Today, our thank you goes to our garden team for gathering uh, Saturday morning or yesterday morning to maintain and care for our beautiful garden spaces. This is a time of the year that is not very conducive to being outside, but our dedicated team met early Saturday morning to do so much needed work. Even though we are not meeting at the church, there's still much that must be done each week and each month in order to maintain the property and keep it looking so beautiful. So thank you volunteers for the devotion and literal sweat equity that you have put into our church. We had quite a number of people showing up, but um, don't hesitate to join the team. Everyone is welcome. Our live streaming fund stands at $6,900 toward our goal of 15,000. Thank you so much for contributing. Now we continue to announce our progress each week and to ask for your help with this project because now more than ever, we are aware of the need to ramp up our capabilities to serve not just our congregants, but everyone who has access to the internet. We have literally opened the doors of Unity of Fort Worth to the world. And in order to do that with style and as efficiently and effectively as possible, we need the equipment that will enable this. So let's keep this moving in the right direction. If you're able to give on top of your usual support, a contribution to this fund helps ensure that we can move confidently into the new adventure and put our best foot forward. At 12.30 today, we'll be meeting to discuss the future of Unity Fort Worth Youth and Family Ministry. We're asking all who are interested to attend, but especially those uh, stakeholders such as parents and children and teachers in the program. We need your input to envision the future of our youth and family ministry. Youth and family is an important part of any spiritual community and it is up to us to decide how we can best serve our young ones here at Unity Fort Worth, especially right now and in these times. So please join us at 12.30 p.m. in the Zoom Fellowship Hall for this important conversation and new beginning. And we'll have our next town hall meeting on the fourth Sunday of this month, which will be next Sunday, July the 26th. We'll meet in our Zoom Fellowship Hall at 12.30 in order to update you on our COVID response, our most recent financials, and the future of our YFM. So we invite everyone to join us and get these updates and ask any questions that you might have regarding these topics. That's all for announcements today. Now let's enjoy some more music and we have a special one coming up for you. Shiny. 
It is just beyond words what our music team puts together. Show them some love. This was Beverly, Lane, Peter, and Larissa. And before we had uh, Andrew joining Beverly and Larissa. And a little bit later, we'll have Alan and Melissa uh, performing another song. Just if you don't know, I've mentioned it before a while ago. These are all done at everyone's home listening to Larissa's accompaniment and then singing their part without hearing anyone else's. So it's quite difficult and I think uh, it deserves some appreciation. Thank you all so much for hanging in there as we're going through this together. So today I wanted to talk about a topic that is often I guess it's a little harder to talk about the masks that we wear. And I'm really not talking about the masks that we wear right now uh, for obvious reasons, to stay safe, to keep us safe, to keep others safe. It's not the physical mask so much that I wanna to address today. However, I noticed over the past few weeks how by putting on the mask whenever I get out of the car, get out of the house, go into the grocery store and then go back in and take it off, how I was just reflecting on this very simple motion that I do, this simple act of just putting a mask on and taking it off, which ultimately led to, to the inspiration of today today's talk. What I want to talk about is the metaphorical mask that we wear. In fact, it's probably not just one mask that we wear, but many. 
Uh, both, of course, the physical mask and the metaphorical mask are important, but we do give preference to the metaphorical mask, not only because we have an opportunity to be reminded of an important spiritual practice around that, which is to release of any masks that no longer serve us at this time. Also, every time we, again, as I said, we are inspired and reminded every time we put the physical mask on and can use that as an inspiration and an opportunity to think about what mask can I get, get rid of or let go of. Many ways we can make it a ritual to bring greater awareness to our willingness to show more of who we are as we interact with today's world. So for today, we're using a simple affirmation that really surrounds the topic that we're talking about today. I release the masks that no longer serve me. Together, I release the masks that no longer serve me. Let's try to answer three questions today. First of all, why are we wearing masks in the first place? Then, why should we release some of them for our greater good? And finally, how do we do that? So when we are thinking of why are we wearing masks in the first place, there's several things we can think about. For example, the holiday Halloween is actually a very ancient Celtic tradition it came from that Celtic celebration or tradition of wearing a mask to hide from bad spirits. And so the practice of wearing a mask was really about hiding from the bad spirits surrounding us. And as you know, in unity with the idea of oneness in mind, with the idea of a community being in that community as individuals, but also as a whole, we always look at both the outside and the inside. So maybe the hiding with the mask was not only for outside spirits, but also for inside spirits that may challenge us. From a psychological point of view, more modern times, you can think of the imposter syndrome, that wearing a mask metaphorically, has a lot to do with the fact that we often feel like we're really not that put together. We're really pretending to be someone else who we are. And ultimately what that is, is a fear of being found out that we are trying to hide with the masks that we wear. And then there is the idea of projection, again, from a psychological perspective, or from a more ancient perspective, the idea of mirroring, that our outside world perfectly mirrors what's going on on the inside, <clears throat> that we often project our own fears and, and um, worries onto other people. And we're doing this through our masks and looking at the same time at their masks without recognizing the truth of who we are and who they are. If you understand a little bit about shadow work or have heard about the shadow, this is also called facing the shadow. When we project, we get an opportunity to face that shadow. Many of us ignore it or don't even see it. But when we get into this work, we actually get to see how powerful this kind of work can be. <clears throat> when I'm thinking of projection or mirroring or looking at other people or telling someone else what to do or whatever it is, or even silently just thinking about someone else, I'm thinking, of, I'm looking at this picture, pointing one finger outward, how many are pointing back? We often quickly point fingers at others, not realizing that in most cases, 
we are simply projecting some of our own hurt and separation onto them. To remember that there are always three fingers pointing back while only one is pointing out is a valuable exercise for us to do because it gives us pause. For me, at least, whenever I remember to do so, and I don't always remember, but whenever I see something going on on the outside I don't like, I'm asking myself, well, wait a minute, there are three fingers pointing backwards. What is it within me? What is it that I am missing? When we point fingers at each other, the same applies. There's often much more to learn within ourselves if we are willing to reflect. When we do this, we point each, uh, at each other with, with the fingers. We still have six fingers now pointing back at both of us as two people as we are interacting. And that should be a reminder for everyone that there is a learning that goes on much deeper than we think. And then finally, often when we are part of a group, we easily point fingers at an individual or a smaller group, minority group, a different group, anyone really who may not be inclined to defend themselves. Again, the same applies. When we do that, we point with one fingers, but three are pointing backwards. So we could say that the reason we are wearing masks is to protect ourselves and to hide from danger. But we also wear masks for practical reasons, to fulfill a role or navigate within society. We wear a mask to be able to be part of a group. And once we learn to wear the appropriate mask for this group, then if someone doesn't know or have that mask, we point it out to them and said, you better out pick up that mask here so you can belong to us. So the question then becomes, which masks are we to let go of? What is it that we are supposed to let go of? If some masks are useful, because we need to navigate the workplace, we need to fulfill our roles as parents, as co-workers, as supervisors or supervisees. Which masks are we really talking about? What is it that we should address? And how are we addressing it? That is the question. I release the masks that no longer serve me. Let's say this together. I release the masks that no longer serve me. So before we can really answer the question, why should we release some of the, those masks for our greater good? We should really go into uh, understanding what happens when we are truly becoming who we are. One of the most powerful Beatitudes taught by Jesus Christ is the one expressed in the fifth word, verse of chapter five in the Gospel of Matthew. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. There's often confusion as to the meaning of meek. Many think meek means weak. But when we look at the original Greek word, praus, or praus, which means gentle or mind, and also understood to be a strength under control, then we realize that it's very hard to, under, to translate this word because in English, there's really no word that expresses both a gentleness and the pure expression of power. However, it does follow the idea of being able to stand in power without having to be harsh, which is an often forgotten virtue nowadays. Nowadays, power means um, to be angry. Power means to be curt. Power means to be strict. The idea that we can be in power while being gentle can sometimes feel really foreign. And as we consider the masks that we wear, 
we may now start to understand maybe some of those masks I have on may look a little bit harsher than I am that I'm truly am. Another way to approach the same idea is to think of us learning to be vulnerable with each other. Again, vulnerability is often perceived as a sign of weakness, but the opposite is actually true. Vulnerability is a great strength that we can develop. And it's something that is important for us, especially those of us who are clearly on the spiritual path. It's probably one of the most important things to develop within ourselves, the ability to be vulnerable. And in order to be vulnerable, what we have to let go of, you probably already know it, are the masks that we wear, those that no longer serve us, those that have served us to protect ourselves because we needed to show strength without gentleness. But as we know, as the meek inherit the, the earth, if we are willing to follow those teachings, then we are ready to let go of some of those masks. In Japanese culture, there is this common idea of that we're wearing three different faces. The first one is the one that we show to the world. The second one is the one that we show to family and friends. And the third one is the one that we show to ourselves. Our level of vulnerability changes depending on our audience. If we are interacting with a whole group of people, we are definitely probably the most cautious, the most unvulnerable, if that is even a word. If we are with family and friends, we're probably a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more willing to show, hey, this is really who I am. And then all by ourselves, we're probably the most vulnerable, the most true to us. And even then, we sometimes are still wearing quite a few masks. So just like in Halloween, at Halloween in ancient times, depending on our vulnerability, depending on the audience that we face, in a sense, we're trying to hide from evil. Remember, in unity, we don't believe in evil as a power that is uh, equal to God. Evil is just an expression of truth that's being so distorted that it has become harmful to ourselves and others. And that, that's why we perceive it as evil, but it all originates from the same place. So what often can happen is as we try to hide ourselves from evil, what we're actually doing is we're limiting our powers and create more of the same over and over again. We must learn to embrace ourselves via our willingness to look at all that we are. If we look at all that we are, then we have the strength to develop the vulnerability for others to admire. See, it is when we become real with each other, when we get to see the shining light that's already within ourselves. See the masks as a block. It's not just a veil, but it is a clear block from letting that light shine through. And every time we are willing to take a mask off and surrender it and say, I no longer need that. I no longer need that to protect myself. I no longer need to hide from that evil because I realize that I can change what I perceive as evil into goodness pure goodness, pure love, because I shift away from judgment. I let go of regrets. I forgive myself and others for the misgivings, for error thinking, for missing the mark. Our work, the work that we do individually and as a community, especially in today's time, is important. It's crucial so that others may give themselves permission to shine more brightly also. Every time we are willing to take off a mask and actually share that experience with others, 
we may give someone else permission to do the same. And then we're no longer in this alone. Those of you familiar with the story of Siddhartha sitting by the river until reaching enlightenment may remember that it took Siddhartha quite some time, probably years, to embrace everything the river had to say to him. Vasudeva, the person next to him, the ferryman, patiently encouraged Siddhartha to continue to listen. If you know the story, Siddhartha came multiple times to Vasudeva and said, I got it, I got it. I now listen, I can hear what the river has to say. And Vasudeva said, no, I'm not there yet. Keep listening. This is what's ours to do. We are here to continue to listen to the flow of life and learn, embracing everything, rejecting nothing. If you look closely in this picture, in the bottom right there, if you look at the river, you probably notice that there's some masks drawn into the river. I love this when I found this picture, I thought it was so cool. We are the river holding many masks. And as we learn to embrace all those masks that we put on, starting to understand why we put them on in the per first place and resolve those things that we need to resolve so we can let go, we can just let it flow down river. That's ours to do. That's when we become a great teacher ourselves. That is one of the many lessons Siddhartha learned before becoming one of those great teachers. And this is the potential that we have. You know, very commonly it's understood that Jesus Christ and Siddhartha and Krishna and Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and Moses, you name it. Many times we think of them as very special people, and of course they were, but we also reject the idea that we could be just as special as they are. I believe the biggest difference between those great teachers and us is not how much they learned, when they lived, what great sayings they came up with. The biggest difference is that they have learned to let go of the masks and just to be completely themselves, to end the suffering by becoming who they are. Even in modern psychology, we actually find some good reasons why we should let go of some of the masks. The first that's mentioned in uh, quite a bit of research is that we are getting to live our potential. We have to learn to bring all of who we are to what we do. So many of us have quite some similar skill sets. You know, think about the people you know. If you really get to know each other, you realize that some of our stories are very similar. Some are different, and yet the skill set may be quite the same or very similar at times. And yet, usually none of us share the exact same personality, creativity, and spirit that we bring to life. So it's unfortunate that we sometimes, at least in the workplace, we are focusing so much on the skill set and developing the skill set without allowing ourselves to really let the personality come through, that uniqueness that is within us. And so we know in, in psychology that the more we are allowing ourselves to let go, let go of some of the limitations we put on ourselves, the more the potential comes through. A second reason for letting go from a psychological perspective is relief. If you think about it, handling all these different masks is kind of exhausting. You know, think just for a moment how many masks you put up, how many jobs you do, how many relationships you have. Some relationships you wear this mask, others you wear that mask. In this job environment, you wear this mask, in that job environment, the other. That can be draining. Depending on the situation, we are constantly putting on masks and take them off. We might talk to one person over here and have this set of masks on, and then we turn over to that person, and then we have to switch those masks. It's a logistical nightmare, which is one of 
a favorite term of mine. It's, it's exhausting and we really shouldn't have to do that. So it can be a relief to actually feel the freedom of showing who we truly are. And the final and third reason that I want to mention from that perspective is healing. See, when we wear masks, we often withhold parts of ourselves that we, in many cases, often and often consider unworthy. We're withholding parts that are crucial for our own healing. We may actually have harmed ourselves over many years through judgment and through not wanting to step into who we truly are. And we are rejecting even the potential for healing by keeping those wear masks off. Often we ask others to help us heal and yet we are holding parts of ourselves back. You know, think of a small group meeting that you had just recently or maybe a book study you did or a class you took or even just meeting with people in the fellowship hall afterwards. Sometimes we reach out, we ask to heal, maybe not in direct words, but indirect words, but we're not willing to give all of ourselves. This is like asking someone to help put together a broken vase while holding back some of the pieces. The healing only can happen when we are willing to show the complete picture. So living our potential, find relief, true healing are some pretty big reasons for us to drop the masks that hinder us going all the way. Now it's important to release those masks that no longer serve us to allow us to become more vulnerable and as such stronger in our standing of who we are as humans and spirits. It is important because as the meek, we will inherit the earth as we demonstrate our willingness to no longer fake it until we make it, but instead faith it until we make it will bring us closer together. Closer in the sense we learn to embrace ourselves more gently and kindly, release some of the judgments, regrets and worries that surround us. Closer in the sense of our spiritual community as we learn to listen more gently and kindly, allowing each other to be without judgment, regrets and worries. And closer in the sense that we serve a larger community with our actions more gently and kindly as we give others the same courtesy of being who they, they are. We give them the courtesy what we have learned to give ourselves. I release the masks that no longer serve me. Together, I release the mask that no longer serve me. So how are we going to do all that? It seems daunting, doesn't it? Right now, you might think, what if I just don't know anymore What's a mask and what is my authentic self? Yes, if we have more a mask, like we have worn a mask long enough, we might have come so accustomed to it that it feels like such an important part of us. So how do we know? One approach is to practice Unity's five principles, out of which the fourth principle is focused on the practical application. If we were in person right now, I would certainly challenge you on what the fourth principle states. Mm -hmm. So if you want, just put it in the comments. What does the fourth principle reflect? It's four or five words. It's not that hard. So let me see it in the comments if you can remember. Here's Unity's fourth principles. It's prayer, meditation, denials, and affirmations. If you have not taken a unity class on the principles or read a book about them, I encourage you to do so. There are some unique aspects to these practices that are important to be learned and used to make sure they work in your favor. But that's a really good way for us to actually understand where we are wearing masks. In prayer, we can ask for it to be shown to us. 
in meditation, we can use an even gentler approach to simply have the intuition and the intention to tap into our greater divinity and then automatically understand and see what the masks are we put back on as we come out of meditation. Denials and affirmations can help us to be even more specific. There's many ways we can approach this. Others may be interested in uh, shadow work. Ken Wilber's three, two, one method is quite popular. In shadow work, what we're doing is we're internalizing everything that we first see on the outside. We use our projections that we project onto others in person or sometimes even on, on other situations in a larger scheme, on countries, on the world as a whole. Three to one simply means three is way out there, way, way out there, when we have hardly any connection with it. So we bring it a little bit closer and make it more personal. The two is like a conversation we would have with a friend about the issue that we want to address. And one finally is taking it all inside. That is just one of many methods how we can actually learn about the masks that we perceive others wear just to ultimately realize it's us who are doing the wearing. And finally, it's community. There's a reason why we emphasize community so much here at Unity Fort Worth. Learning and healing does not usually happen in isolation, but it does in community. We all serve each other as both the triggers for upsets, but also opportunities for healing. Yes, our inner work is important because it shows us that we are okay exactly as we are. And this experience will give us the courage and extend the courtesy to allow others to be as they are as well. Is it always easy? Most certainly not. In fact, many are disillusioned with churches or spiritual communities because they experience more conflict than anywhere else. I often hear it. Why have churches so much conflict? Why can't we just all love each other? It's because we need to learn that first. Okay? To love each other is not always easy. And it often goes through those limitations that we put on ourselves. When you think of it, it is the conflict that gives us the opportunity to heal. It is the conflict as we learn to become more vulnerable, as we let go of the mask and we start to be more vulnerable, more courageous with each other that allows us that healing to happen. It's through the conflict that we actually see where healing is needed. And sometimes it's about us and sometimes it's about someone else and sometimes it's about every one of us. In the end, it really doesn't matter as long as we are willing to look at the whole picture and be essentially the meek that will inherit the earth. Remember what weak meek means? It means to be gentle, but with power. So as we enter conflict or as we enter disagreements in our community and the greater community, we may do so with power, but also with gentleness and kindness. The more we are willing to show more of who we are, the more we will experience others to do the same. And that is how we can move forward. So we can learn to release our masks in many ways, some of which will be done in isolation by ourselves and others require the assistance of others. Remember that the projection only turns into a harmful experience when we fail to recognize what it is. Once we learn that we are simply seeing something in others that wants to be healed in ourselves, we are more likely to show the necessary vulnerability for us to drop our masks and join everyone in the process. Truly, we are blessed as we learn to become more like the meek. And we will inherit the earth as we find our authentic self to walk the earth without being in fear of rejection or separation. 
We are the river that we seek to be with all its masks, currents, debris, and infinite flow. Many, may we release the suffering behind our masks as we put them down in service to our growth and that of others. Our authentic self is needed right now, more so than ever before. As we put the mask on, the physical mask, we may consider what metaphorical mask we can let go of. As we protect ourselves in the physical sense, we may consider the things that no longer need protection, but are actually important right now for us to be shown. Courtesy, gentleness, kindness, love, vulnerability. That way we can support each other in community. I release the masks that no longer serve me. Together, I release the masks that no longer serve me. So as we move into meditation today, let us just take a moment and reflect on what it means to wear a mask. Let us come together as individuals and as a community. And let us recognize that whatever we have done, we, have, we may have done before. It's okay. Right now in our meditation, we can simply envision each other We can imagine all of us to be in a group, in a community. And we can give ourselves permission to simply be who we truly are. Imagine for a moment that you no longer have to pretend. Nothing that you share can be too embarrassing, too shameful. No one will judge. Allow for a moment to move into this possibility. Being mask free. How wonderful would that be? How beautiful the world would look like if none of us needed to pretend anymore. Just imagine for a moment you didn't have to 
say one thing or the other just to keep peace. Imagine a community where you can say what's in your heart and people will understand. Imagine a moment for a moment that a safe space where we can be wrong without being ashamed. A place where we can simply recognize, oh, I was wrong. I didn't see that. Now I can change. The place that, where we can come back to without feeling embarrassed, having to worry about past experiences, where everyone is kind and gentle, understanding that we all are going through this together. There is a reason why we are here right now. There's a reason why you got up this morning and you chose to watch the service. There's a reason why I felt inspired to talk about this. There's a reason why we meditate on the idea of a maskless community. And that reason is not given from anywhere outside of ourselves. We are the very reason why we are here. It's our choice. our passion, our strive for growth. So let us take this as an inspiration for this week. Can we let go of absolutely all the masks we have ever worn in our lives? Probably not, but we can start. Or we can give someone else permission to let go of their masks. Tell them how much we love them, how much we appreciate, and how much they can feel safe around us. We all need this right now. So let us take the risk. As we close for today, we move into the experience of gratitude. True thanksgiving doesn't have to be created. It just needs to be recognized. And right now, all of us coming together recognize how grateful we are being here, being part of this, 
being part of this important experience. So we say thank you. Thank you to ourselves for being willing to be here. Thank you for each other for doing the same. Thank you for this community to keep this shining light going for everyone to see, whoever is ready to join and be part of who we are. And so it is, amen. Thank you, Shaunari, for helping me to realize that when I take off my metaphorical mask that no longer serves me and I allow myself to be vulnerable, then I can give someone else permission to do the same. And now is the time that we practice generosity while giving as source. And we do that virtually by giving online. On your screen, you'll see a link and a phone number that you can use for your one time or your recurring gift. So let's take our gift or a symbol of our gift in our hands and place it over our hearts or we can connect with our partners as we bless our offering as the very abundance that we already are. Together, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. I am grateful. One, two, three, four. And I have a little more. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I love you. A, B, C, D. Can I bring my friend to tea? G-H-I-J, I love you. Bum, 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 bum. Sail the ship, bum, bum, bum. Chop the tree, bum, bum, bum. Skip the rope, bum, bum, bum. Look at me. All together now. All together now. All together now. All together now. Oh. 
well. What great music uh, we had this week. Thank you so much. Did anybody spot the cameos in that last song? That's pretty great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. And jump on over to the virtual fellowship hall and say hi to everyone before we start the meeting to envision the future of our YFM. And don't forget our town hall meeting will be next Sunday after church. Stay safe, be well, and have a wonderful week. And now let's us say it together, the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and I am. the masks that no longer serve me. So let's say this once more together. I release the masks that no longer serve me. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe and namaste. <laughs>